Wake up, little H Rack Tech. Mm. Wake up. Mm. Wake up. What you want? Mom said to fix the air. You tell your mama. I'm working on it. Okay. I'll fix it when I want to. What we gotta fix? You tell me. I'll tell you how awesome my beard is first, sucker. Ah, we gotta do the capacitor. All right, here we go. Uh, couldn't believe what I heard the other day. Somebody had actually said uh, that they don't know how to check a capacitor. Like that's something we don't teach young technicians, uh, old technicians teaching new technicians, educators teaching students, what have you, all right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this on my unit and let y'all see what we got. Two ways to check a capacitor. Um, and I've got my dual capacitor right here in front of me. So one's with the power off and one's with the power on. I tell a lot of new students, new techs or whatnot that I'm teaching, uh, it's best to probably go ahead and check it with the power off just to be safe. But here's one for uh, the more experienced maybe or the more adventure, adventurous uh, technicians out there. But uh, one older technician asked me a question one day. When's the best time to check electrical components? You can't check a motor without having power applied to it. You can't check a contactor without having voltage applied to it. So can you check a capacitor with no power applied to it? Well, the answer is yes, but is it as accurate as checking it with the power on? We're about to find out. And I'll show you my readings. So uh, here we go. I've got my fluke meter right here. It's going to give me the voltage. On this dual capacitor, what we're going to check is the voltage from the common to the herm, and we're going to record it, and then the voltage from the common to the fan, and we're going to record that as well. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to go common to herm. So there's my common, there's my herm, and I've got 377 volts. All right? So I'm going to take out a scrap piece of paper. We're going to go herm and fan. 377 volts. All right. Now I'm going to check the common to the fan. So we're going to go common terminal to the fan, and we get 330. And it bounces around just a little bit. So we're going to write over here for the fan 330. All right. Now the second part to this with the power on is to use an amp meter. So I've got my amp meter right here. I'm going to set it down to the lowest possible setting, and I'm going to check the amperage coming off of the Herm terminal and off of the fan terminal. So right here is this orange wire. I'm going to clamp it around and try to center the wire, and I've got 6.57 amps. So I'm going to take and record that, 6.57 amps. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my fan, which is going to be going to be this brown wire right here. So we're going to take that brown wire and I've got 0.76. So we're going to record that 0.76. And here's where we're going to use those numbers. All right. There's a standard formula and it starts with 2650 and that's varies between whose article you read. 2651, 2652, I've always been taught to round it to the 2650, and we're going to multiply that times the amperage, and then we're going to divide that answer by the voltage. So if we look at this, there we go. Our readings from before, right? 377 volts uh, from the Herm terminal going to our compressor to the start winding, and we've got that at a little over six and a half amps. And we're going to take our 330 volt. 330 volts off of our fan terminal to common and multiply that times the 0.76 amps that was going to the fans start winding. All right, so we're going to apply that in this this standard formula for capacitors. Okay, this formula is only used when you're checking it with the power on. Be very careful. Don't touch any other terminals besides the two that you need to, and make sure you definitely don't touch anything that will ground one of those leads. So. I've done the math off camera, okay? If I take 2650 and multiply it by the amperage that I got off my Herm terminal, 
I get 17,410.5, all right? I take that value and divide it by the 377 volts that I got from the common to the Herm terminal, and I have a capacitance value of 46.18 microfarads. Is it good, is it bad? You have to check your capacitor to, to uh, look at the manufacturer specs. For the fan terminal, I got 2650 times my 0.74 amps or 0.76 amps and I get uh, 2014. I divide that by the 330 volts that I registered on the common to fan terminal for voltage and I do the math and I come out with 6.1 microfarads. So is that correct? We'll find out. All right. If you look right here on my capacitor, um, this is a dual capacitor of course. It's rated for 45 and a 7.5. So, and this is plus or minus 10%, so the numbers are gonna be uh, fairly easy to do in your head. So I could basically go almost between 40 and 50 microfarads. That's not exact, that's an estimation of math. And then I could go 10% of seven and a half, and I could go down to 6.75 or up to 8.25 or so. Um, so what that would tell me, looking at the calculations I've done and the, and the quick math I did in my head, the capacitor for my compressor portion is fine, but looking at it on the fan side, I'm a little out of range on the low end, all right? So that's how you check it with the power on. Let's look at checking it power off, and we're going to compare those numbers uh, in just a second. So I'm going to pull the disconnect. There we go. Pull the disconnect. Reach in my good old goodie bag. Some guys will tell you to uh, go ahead and take these terminals and a screwdriver and touch them together. Make sure you discharge everything. I've never been shocked on a run capacitor. That's just me. I've had some people say they blow up in their faces or something sparks. Uh, that's just not the case with me. So I'm going to take my old Fluke 16 meter that they don't even make anymore and I'm going to slide it over to microfarads. There we go. And we're going to pull, we're going to pull the common and, or I'm sorry, we're going to pull the herm and the fan wires off. You want to make sure that, that you don't have anything on those terminals, okay? And I'm going to check from common to herm. And I get 42.9. So I'm going to record that. All right. And then we're going to check the fan. We're going to go common to fan. And we're going to look at that and it's going to say 6.64. It's going to be 6.64 microfarads. There we go. So uh, just to cap this off real quick, uh, you can see that this was uh, the formula that we did with the power off or I'm sorry, with the power on and uh, actual, you know, running current through the capacitor and, you know, powering the fan and the, and the compressor. Power on versus power off. So if I, if I checked it with the power off, then my capacitor is going to tell me that, uh, you know, my, my meter is going to tell me that my capacitor is a little weak on the, on, on the compressor side. If I look at uh, the fan side, you know, power on with the formula and then power off. Uh, it looks to be the opposite. So my biggest question is, which one do you trust? Because power on, compressor's fine, fan's a little weak. Power off, the compressor's fine. Or, uh, excuse me, the compressor's a little weak, and the fan is fine. So uh, either way, they're both within tolerance on the compressor, uh, but the fan, either way, is, is out. So... I'm going to go ahead and change this thing out, and uh, that way we're good. So, I'm not one of those guys that will take and uh, just just uh, put in a single fan capacitor for this. Um, if I'm changing a dual capacitor, I'm going to change the whole thing. Whether e either side is bad, I'm going to change the whole thing. Now, I'm not so crazy as to... Uh, throw this thing away, I'll keep it as a spare in my uh, 
in my garage just uh, for a backup in case something does happen this summer. Um, and it just so happens that I've got a nice new capacitor right here, uh, 45, seven and a half. If I go ahead and check that, let's go common to Herm. 45 and a half, it's in specs. If I go ahead and check common to fan, 7.53. So uh, power off check, this thing is, uh, is dead on the money. Now I took and drilled a hole in this bracket because this capacitor uh, is a little bit small. So uh, here's the original factory hole. I drilled a small one right here. You can use a uh, self-tapping screw or whatnot. I try not to go into the cabinet. That's a threaded hole that uh, train put there, but I'm gonna take and make it look neat. I'm just gonna bend it with my, with my, uh, my pliers here and use that same factory screw to put everything back together okay so here we go we're gonna put this thing in just whatever you do out there fellas make sure you, you know try to think about the customer try to do it professional make it look good you know there's nothing wrong with making a making a good a good living you know making some money but uh give them their give them their money's worth so uh one thing I didn't tell you is on the bottom of this, I went ahead and wrote the date with a Sharpie marker. That way I know exactly what date that I put this in. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. The label is out front and uh, I'm going to orient, orientate. I'm going to change the terminals to where they best suit the wires and their length and line it back up just like I had before. I'm going to put the common wire from the compressor. That's going to bring our power in. There you go. Then I'm going to have that purple wire go into the fan off of that common terminal. I've got the orange on my herm, and I've got the brown on my fan. So, like I said, on the bottom of this, I went ahead and wrote with a Sharpie marker the day that I installed this. Um, I'm not going to show you that. I don't want y'all hounding me about putting videos out and what days I do it and stuff. So, um... And now we'll turn it back on just to make sure that it works properly. So here we go. And I despise these disconnects like this. One day I'm going to change this out. So there we go. She's working fine. So uh, hopefully this helps. Whether you check it with a power on or power off, make sure you check it. If it's weak, make a judgment call, inform the customer, and let them make that decision. So hopefully it helps. Leave me a comment if you. Whether you do or not, you know, um, it's always good to hear back and that way I can judge how, how people are taking this information. So I'm not perfect. I'm not going to edit, you know, five hours of, of editing time for a 10 minute video. It's just not me. So I try to do it in one shot, but uh, hopefully you get a little bit out of it. So until next time.